Hello everyone, many of you found my video to extract Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations to Azure via BYOD or Bring Your Own Database, very useful. And thank you for watching again, appreciate it. Uh, if you find out that video, it's up in the link here. And today's video is actually an extension uh, to that. Uh, I'm just going to share some more tips to set up export jobs in BYOD and Dynamics here and some pitfalls that might be useful for you. If you don't know me, I'm Rhys Ang, data engineer, uh, working in consultancy and specialize in Microsoft Azure. And if you like videos like this, data engineering, Microsoft Azure, consider subscribe to my channel and obviously thumbs up if you like it. Before I start, I want to highlight that uh, I'm using the Dynamics 365 product version 10.0.18 and platform version update 42. Just so that making sure you are hopefully on the sort of version, same version or close version to what I have because otherwise some of the tips might not apply to you. Tip number one, set the data management and batch job modules as your favorite. If you go and find these favorites on the left, you notice I have two favorites here, batch jobs and data management. This is basically the two modules that you need to set up BYOD. And to make this as a favorite, you just need to go to modules, find system administration. If you don't see system administration, that means you don't have access. Please ask your uh, Dynamics admin to give you one and within system admin uh, you want to find workspace uh, you want to drill down workspaces where you find data management click the start next to it and also inquiries and there's best job here click the start next to it once you've done that you will find they appear here and this helped me save so much time when tip number two Avoid using special characters in your SQL database account password. Let me explain. When you set up the connection for the first time, you would go to data management and then you go to configure entity export. Click that. And I'm just going to stick to my existing connection here. And you would do, uh, you would put the connection string uh, here, right? And there would be an account uh, username and password in there. And that comes from the SQL database uh, account that you created there. Now my recommendation is avoid using special characters uh, like the, the weird hyphen, like this, this little worm symbol uh, or quotes. Try to avoid any special characters if you can, and and when because what happened is if you use some weird special characters, it happened to me. Uh, your export will fail, and the failure is very obscure. It's not clear, and uh, it took me ages to figure out why. And it turns out it's a password. So, yeah, don't do that. Tip number three. Refresh your dynamics when there's an environment update. What I mean by environment update is if there's a code change into your dynamics environment, generally speaking, it's safe that you want to refresh the entities uh, in, in dynamics before you uh, continue the export job. And let me show you what I mean by that. You would go again in data management screen, you would go to framework parameters now, Click it, and within here, go to Entity Settings. There's an option here to refresh Entity List. Okay, and all you need to do is just click it, and it will refresh it. And it usually takes about ten to fifteen minutes, and just wait, and then you can continue on uh, the export job. It happens. Uh, that's for me when I didn't do this and I continued the export job, the export either failed or the export basically just didn't pull up the, the data <laughs> properly. Uh, so just remember that uh, when you have, uh, when the Dynamics uh, developers made or 
deployed new changes to the environment. Tip number four, export entity for all companies. Now, if you see the top right here, sorry, it's a bit blocked by my face. Uh, there is an option to change company. Now, at the moment, I'm on this dummy company, DAT. And if you click it, you have the drop down that you can change. Now, if you want to export data uh, for this particular company, uh, you can do that when you run the export job that I will show a little bit later. But if you happen to have multiple companies, and and while you're uh, on one company, and you want to export the data for all companies, not just that one you're on, uh, you can do that. And the way you do that is you go to framework parameters here on the, yeah, here. And you go to bring your own database here. Yeah? And you make sure this toggle is set to yes. Enable all company export. Okay. And once you do, I'm going to go back to and use this dummy export job. What I can do is when I add a new entity, let's say I'm just going to type budget, budget code. Now set all the settings here and you notice here there is this toggle as well to export across all companies okay and if i click add and now it's adding and it's tick here on the last column export all companies and if you want to edit that you can click here on the top left edit and you can just untoggle that and Totally untick it and then click save. Yeah, and yeah, that will save it. And just a bit of um, uh, advice uh, sometimes uh, this setting doesn't work on some entities, meaning when you uh, click save when you add entity previously, uh, when you do that, when you click add, it will throw an error. And sometimes the error is not very obvious. But generally speaking, when this doesn't work, that entity is a global entity, uh, meaning its, uh, uh, its value is used across all companies. So you basically don't need to export all companies because it's basically the same uh, one sort of entity used across all. Hope that makes sense. Tip number five, clone an existing export job, but with different source data format. Or connection. Let me explain. Let's say you have this export job here that is, for example, exporting two entities into this BYOD. Yeah, connection. This is the connection. It's, um, it's connecting to this dev DB. Yeah, and let's say you want to create uh, a new export entity job. But not in this environment, but in a complete, completely different dynamics environment. Let's say it's a pre-production or production environment. How do you do that? Well, you can obviously do go in and create a new export job and add all the entities manually. If you have 100 entities, then you have to, well, basically do it 100 times. <laughs> it's a pain. You don't want to do that. There's a hack for that, and I'm going to show you. So the way that you want to do is uh, you want to download these existing export job uh, config files. I just click download. We'll give you this zip file that uh, you can configure. And just bear in mind, the more entities you have, the longer it takes to download and upload later. And yep, I've got this zip file. And if I go to my download and I right click and I just extract here. Okay, I've got these four files because I have two entities and these are the two config files. What I want to do is I want to go to this manifest.xml and edit it. Ed edit it. And put it here. I see some uh, random stuff but what I'm interested in 
is the source format yeah and what I want to do is I'm going to replace this find and replace with something else let's say yeah I want to let's say now point it to uh, a different connection bear in mind this is the connection that you set when you publish by the way make sure you have the, the right uh, wording here and let's say I'm gonna replace it with from dev to preprod I'm gonna replace all now this is replace I have two entities so I have two so rows here I'm gonna save it close this down and I want to recreate a new zip file based on these four files yeah not the zip file the old zip file so I'm just gonna create this one here I'm gonna call it uh, I'm just gonna stick to it downloads.zip yeah just bear that in mind when I go back and let's say I am in a new environment just hypothetically and I'm creating a new export job let's say w batch 2 here it's blank and what do we want to do is we click this add file and you click upload and you find the new zip file so downloads.zip again the more entities you have the longer it takes and now voila when you close it's the same two entities but now the source data format is pointing to a different connection so bear in mind you can't really edit this connection for some reason just not allowed so the only way to do it is via that XML file, unfortunately. You can edit other things here. You can change the, the refresh type from incremental to push, but not this one. Tip number six, have separate export jobs for different refresh frequency. Uh, typically, and this is optional, uh, I like to have different export jobs for different refresh frequency, meaning I have these three batch jobs that I uh, set uh, that to run at a different time. So I have this batch one that runs every four hours uh, incremental uh, load. I have this batch two that runs uh, incremental as well, but every 24 hours, so every day. And there's batch three that runs full load, but every 24 hours or every day. And they are exporting different entities. And I like to organize it that way so that it's uh, yeah, it's better. It's, it's just easier to navigate. And there's another one here. I have this batch full load, which has all the entities from batch one, two, and three. And they're all uh, done in, uh, they're all set to do full load. But I don't, I don't uh, set up a regular export here because I just want to use it to uh, refresh uh, all of them uh, back to its original position if I need to. It's like a manual uh, refresh really tip number seven export the entity into Excel when you have expected some data but it doesn't show up in BYOD for whatever reasons and the best and the quick way before you start blaming people in dynamics uh, you want to make sure there's actually data in dynamics and the way to do that is to export that into Excel to do that very simple create a new export job and then wait for a sec and I'm just gonna create something let's say I'm just gonna take this random entity and target data format pick Excel and just follow along full push and just click add voila do the export job and when you do export this may be another tip here how to find or how to download the export the excel file it's actually here so within the uh, within this uh, history uh, export download file okay that's all for today's video. Seven tips to set up export job in Dynamics uh, Finance and Operations. Thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Uh, 
uh, for videos about Microsoft Azure and data engineering. That's it for today. See you next time.